Welcome back. In the previous videos, we learned about HTTP and JSON. We learned that we can send requests and get responses. But there's one issue. Up until now, every time we need to communicate with the server, we make that request. Then the browser, when it receives the response, does a page refresh. Originally, page loading on the web was simple. You'd send a request for a website to a server, and as long as nothing went wrong, the assets would be downloaded by the web page and displayed on your computer. The trouble with this model is that whenever you want to update any parts of the page, for example, display a new set of products, like on Amazon, well, you'll have to load the entire program again. Even the outline, even the navigation bar at the top, everything had to get reloaded, a complete page refresh. This is extremely wasteful and results in a poor user experience, especially as pages get larger and more complex. You can think of it on the Udemy website. If we go to Udemy, well, if I click on, let's say, marketing, the top bar will remain. Do you see that? It's a nice user experience. I can click on tabs and I won't get a complete page refresh. It's, well, it loads data automatically on the page. Now, this issue that we had here led to creation of technologies that allow web pages to request small chunks of data, such as HTML, XML, plain text, JSON, and display them only when needed, helping to solve this refresh problem. And the technology was called Ajax. It allows you to read from a web server after the page has loaded and update a web page without reloading the page. And finally, send data in the background while the user is interacting with the website. It was actually pioneered by Google in 2006 and now is what we expect of websites. And any web app you see online uses Ajax now. You see, Google had this big problem. When we're searching something, well, you would initially type in Apple and it would do a complete page refresh. But now with this, I can maintain the top bar and have this loaded. I can even have suggestions brought up from the server. And this is all a response from the server saying these are some of the suggestions based on Apple Store. So it was a big problem for Google and they were able to solve it with Ajax. But now we all have this ability. So how are we able to do this? What is Ajax? Ajax is just a technology, a method of combining pieces together to achieve this. And it was achieved using a tool that browsers built and it was called XML HTTP request. It looked something like this. You created a new XML HTTP request object. As you can see, it looks a little bit tough. You make a request, you make a get request at this URL. You say on load when it loads. If the status, the response is greater than 200 or less than 400, it's a success. We're going to parse the response text. Remember, because we're receiving a string from the server. If it's not a success, well, we can return an error. And we then send our request and also listen for any errors. It looks pretty tough, but it is things that we've gone over. But don't worry, we actually don't do this anymore. This was the old way of doing it when Ajax was first introduced. jQuery came along and said, well, this is kind of tough to do every time. We'll make it easy for you by just doing this. 
And that was another part of the reason that jQuery was popular. We can just do Ajax requests doing this method. But now there's actually an even nicer, newer way that we've used actually when we build our React app and it's supported by the browsers. And that is called fetch. As you remember, it was fetch at a URL. And then we did this dot then response and we received a response. Now, this is a really good thing because page updates are a lot quicker and you don't have to wait for the page to refresh, meaning that the site feels faster and more responsive. Also, less data is downloaded on each update, meaning less wasted bandwidth. And this is a major, major issue, especially on mobile devices where internet connection might not be as good. Ajax allows web pages and by extension, web applications to change content dynamically. And it is everywhere. It is something that is just very nice. It looks intimidating, but it's just a matter of doing this fetch that does HTTP for you. And all you do is say, if you want to do a get, a post, and add some JSON data to that request. So let's review again what happens with Ajax. An event occurs on a web page, such as logging in, and I click sign in. XML HTTP request object, again, something that web browsers have implemented, is created, and that's created using JavaScript. XML HTTP request object sends a request to the web server. The server processes the request. And then the server sends a response back to the web page. The response is read by JavaScript, and the user is able to log in. At the same time, only updating a small portion of the window. That is what a single page application is. And it's a word that you've probably heard before, and it's a trend in how to make web apps, where you load a base, an almost empty page and build the content on the fly based on the data fetched from the server. Let's go back to Udemy. When I click on a course, let's do public relations. You see that this is loading one at a time. I had the top bar loaded, then I had a pause and then the rest loaded. If I click on explore course, you see again that top bar loaded, other parts of the web slowly dynamically load. And again, if I go back to photography, for example, again, parts of the web page load dynamically. And that's the beauty. These applications nearly never do a full reload. They destroy the previous content, all or part of it, and rebuild it based on new data, new page. And this might sound familiar to you. Do you remember how we built our RoboFriends app? We fetched this URL that gave us users. So now that we understand these concepts, let's go line by line and see what happens. I used fetch. Based on what I said, fetch should be part of the window object, right? Let's check. If I open up the console and I do window.fetch, yeah, fetch is a function that we can use. And this URL, if you remember, returns for us, what is that? Yeah, a JSON object. And this JSON object, fetch allows us to do something called response, response.json. Well, let's just do this for now and see what happens. I'm gonna copy and paste this. I'm going to open up the console. And you know, I'm gonna open up a new tab to show you that you can do this from anywhere. If I copy and paste this fetch, I get something called a promise. And this is something in JavaScript that you'll get used to. Promise is saying, hey, I'm making a request somewhere over the internet and I promise to let you know when I have this value returned. So the way you access promises, so you have this, once this is returned, give me the value, you do dot then, and it gives you the response. If I add to my previous request dot then, and I do response console.log, 
response. Look at that. I get a response. Status 200. We remember this. Okay, that's good. And we also get this body, but it says readable stream. And fetch, I mean, we learned about json.parse to parse JSON. But fetch actually comes with its own method called, well, JSON. So on this response, if we do JSON, it will actually convert it for us. Let's see. If I go back to that request again, I get a response. If instead of console logging, I say response.json, in that case, I get a promise again. So that means we need to do dot then to receive whenever this returns the promise, which is the value. So again, I go up and do dot then. And in this case, let's see what data we receive. We get data and we'll console.log data. If I press enter, look at that. We receive our users, the same users that were here. So you see now that we simply use the fetch API, which allows us to do an Ajax call after the component mounted. So once our RoboFriends app was loaded, we made an Ajax request using the fetch API. We got a response, which was a promise. So we have to do dot then. And this response, and this is just standard that anytime you do fetch, you'll just remember doing dot JSON, I converted this into something that, well, we can use in JavaScript. And because this returned a promise, we did dot then, we got the users, and now we have the users object. And we never had to refresh the page. And by the way, if you want this JSON, whenever you're accessing it to look prettier and be a little bit more readable, I am using a Chrome extension called JSON View. It's free. You just add it to Chrome. It automatically does it for you. I highly recommend it. Okay, let's go back to this. This should make sense now. We now have the ability to dynamically load our web pages, make single page applications using Ajax. And Ajax is a combination of tools of using the Fetch API, using HTTP, using JSON to communicate with servers. And now we have a complete picture of our front end. Our front end can have HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React. We can use Ajax to communicate with servers. And we use JSON data to send data over the wire. I'm really excited for the next couple of videos. So I'll see you in that one. Bye-bye.